Yo, what's up everyone? This is Ellis. Today I thought we'd do a little cheeky challenge using this sand timer that I brought. I'm gonna try and make a track in one hour, but I can only start the track using the household objects you guys pick for me. I'm also gonna pick a few more myself. Let me read through what we've got here and see if we could make a track from it. So we've got a milk carton, a pillow, the sound of rubbing the rim of a crystal glass with water, my beard trimmer, a microwave, a cup of tea. Actually, I think at least five or six of you said this, so definitely gonna be using that. Hair dryer and shaking a bunch of keys. This should be pretty sick. Let's get to it and I'll also, as we go along, pick up some other things from around the house and we'll record them in and then we'll hop into the studio and we'll start the timer. So we are now in the studio. I have to admit I'm pretty nervous for this. I have no idea how this is going to turn out. I've never, ever done anything like this since I've been producing. But let's give it a go. It might work, it might not. Here's the timer. Three, two, one, and we're live. So, first of all, I already created this little MIDI progression um, earlier. It's, it's, I quite like it. It's quite dark and mysterious, so it sounds like this. So first of all, I guess I've got to find an instrument that will work for the chords. So anything that's tonal, uh, maybe the wine glass. Let's try that. Yeah, this will definitely work, I think. Just make sure it's in tune. Okay, it's a C. I'm just gonna bounce that out. Chuck it into a sampler track so we can play it on the keyboard. And then I'll copy this MIDI down. So it's a C. Ugh. Let's pitch that down. Give it a go. Give it a bit more release. Let's maybe get rid of these notes here. Let's chuck these up. Let's get rid of that. It's sounding a little bit bland, so I'm going to add a bit of OTT to it, I guess. Maybe around here. I think we can get some sort of like chorusy effect going on to kind of make it sound a little bit more wide. So there's a cool preset on here somewhere. Liquid vibe. There we go. Sounds a bit like an organ. I think I'm just gonna EQ out some of those low mids as well. It's quite harsh, wow. Okay, that sounds pretty cool. Let's get that on a bit of a loop. Drop it in octave. It's nicer. So maybe we should filter that in. Lex. 
like so. Turn on the filter for a start. Let's try layering that chord with an actual organ as well, just for sound design purposes. Okay, so let's grab an organ. This one's pretty cool. You can even automate the rotator on it. Okay, I think we need some sort of top melody now. Um, quickly though, one way we can make something a little bit more lo-fi, just add a bit of vinyl crackle in there. It fills up a lot of space. Cool. In fact, what might make this sound better is if we use this sound as well as a drone. Kind of a weird little drone. So, C for the drone. Maybe change this up a bit. There we go. What if we bend it down? There. That's it. Right, let's reverberate this drone that already sounds cool there's this plugin as well that I've downloaded the demo for been recommended it quite a lot this um, where is it where is it this Wolf compressor but it has this really cool um, wow a thing on it let me show you it's kind of like a pitch flow i mean there's a million other ways i can do that but just do that for the sake of time sounds cool this reverb can be bigger though Right, let's get a melody in there. What we got? Maybe the microwave ping could be a cool idea. Perfect. Maybe chop it from there. Again, just going to put that in tune straight away. It's a B. Bounce it down, check it in a sampler. I've kind of got a melody in my head already, actually. Boom, boom, boom. Get this melody down before I forget it.
turn the velocity down and then delay a bit. And pitch it down like so. When I get this right, it's going to sound cool. I promise. Bit too much of a delay. Oh, let's mess with the sound. Ah, poly would work. That's better. Right, let's add some effects to this thing. First of all, maybe we could automate the pitch, which sounds so it sounds a little bit more clicky. Sick. There's OTT at first. It's already better. I think it needs like a big delay or like it needs to be in a big space. So maybe there's a preset on the effect rack. This one's cool. Ah, sick. Feedback, here we go. Fire, is that a reverb? Let's try distorting it a bit. Um, what's the cap say? Let's see that. There we go. If we put the OTT here, actually, no, let's keep it there. So dope. All from a little microwave ping. Now oh, that's cool. Maybe we could use a bit of that wobble on it again. Don't want any compression. Don't want anything changing on the output. Um. Sick. I still think it needs to be a bit more reverb though. change up the melody a little bit. Dank. Let's repeat that. And we can start building it up. So maybe we can add in like an impact or something here to kind of just build up the tension. This one will do. Okay, I think we need like a snap 
awesome thing here. So let's chuck in maybe one of the claps and just reverberate it a bit. Like one of the smaller clap sounds. There we go. Let's use this one for now. Because at the end of the day, we are against the clock. Okay, we definitely need some sort of sub in here. I think just for the sake of time, I'm gonna make a base for the drop, but for the break, I'm just gonna use um, a synth for this because, you know, I think we're about a quarter of the way in. Okay, let's use a preset. Um, this one could work. Fat. Definitely can turn this um, this thing down. Let's add some effects quickly. Just chuck that in for now. Definitely want to get a little groove going too, so maybe we could use something for percussion. Right, what we got, what we got, what we got. We could use, I know, let's use this. So this is the pepper Thing that I tried to make a shaker from. So let's quantize it first. Not too out. This is so weird producing against the timer. Scary. That'll do. So we've got enough there for me to be able to double track that. So if I just slice that down the middle and then duplicate it, drag it underneath, pan this one this way, this one this way, we should have a nice wide shaker. Beautiful. So let's just bust those together. Just gonna compress them a bit, a bit, a lot. and then just make them a bit tighter. Let's add um, the hairdryer. What I'm thinking is if I whack this in a sample mm, let's try it let's try it with just a pitch shifter first see what happens
All right, this 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 could work. So I want this to be a riser. Make it a bit wider. I'm just going to group these together for the sake of time so we can automate them a little bit easier. Let's give this feel that it's building. I'm thinking as well, um, this does feel a little bit hollow in this section, so maybe some kind of Chords could work. Let's just open Sierra. Um, there's a cool sound in here by Oliver. then we can just cut that hairdryer sound off of there too. Might even be cool to just layer that hairdryer with an actual riser. Get that kind of top end of the white noise. This can work. Now, finally for the build part, we can automate the mix of the reverb up on the claps. Just give that a build. Uh, we also need to cut off the microwave thing. And then I think we can move to some sort of drop. I'm thinking let's start with getting a solid drum groove down because once we have that, um, we can just build on top of that. I think the drums are going to be the hardest to nail here. We're only working with a pillow kick here. And I've never ever made a kick drum in my life from scratch, so we'll see how this goes. Okay, I think this one, this one sounds the best. Okay, so let's put that in place, quantize it. All right. That sounds super thin, so maybe we can use fat effects. Oh, that already sounds 10 times better. Nope, let's go with the original. Sick. I think we can add some more bass frequencies for sure. Wouldn't usually do this, but with something like this, I think the only way we're gonna be able to do this is by boosting the bass. I mean, I am no professional at creating kick drums, but I'm assuming that's how we'll get there. So maybe around the 100 hertz area. Yeah, that's a lot of boom there for sure. What I'm not digging about this kick drum at the minute is that I think we've got a nice thump to it, but the the high end and the mid end is just too long and dusty, I guess. So there's one way that we can fix this actually, is this is also a really good technique for sampling kick drums from other people's tunes. Um, so if you use like an imaging plugin, I'm still using the demo of Isotope, but it works for this purpose. If you solo 
first of all this low band here that's that sub kick that that we like already so i've just duplicated that i'm then going to add in the low mids and then basically just going to do the same for every band here just solo in each band and then finally the top end and what this allows me to do now is come in here and shorten the frequencies that i don't like being long so i still want that big thump in in the low end so i'm going to leave that for now this one's quite dusty yo here's your tea bro a tea yeah in a glass glass of tea oh my god that's hot yeah thank you how's it going well, it's good but now i've got a tea in a glass thank it's, you it's meant to help you help the brain yeah, it's not too bad. I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish this in time. I'm still on the kick drum, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, bro. Thank you. <laughs> it's all good, bro. Keep going. Safe, safe. All right. So now I've got a glass of tea, which is which I've never had in my life. Hopefully that'll make me even more motivated to fix this kick drum. That already sounds way way nicer so that's we only need that kind of length for that low mid this one is way too long cool and then finally the high end is probably the longest sick so together fire now I'm just going to bounce that out as one kick drum. Hopefully, if the plugins allow me to do that. No. So I'll rebounce that. So we've got a kick drum now. So we can kind of start playing around with this quickly. How long have we got left? About halfway. I'm just going to shorten this kick a little bit more, actually. That's cool. Okay. Um, I think there's way too many high frequencies. The low end is kind of giving me this hip hop type kick vibe. So I can kind of just shelve off these frequencies a bit. Okay. Maybe even cut some frequencies. How low can we go? Definitely turn this down. Can even add potentially a bit of saturation. I think I've got a plug uh, preset on here. Ooh, what if we put that before this? Cool, I reckon this might actually work. I think um, let's bounce that out and I can see the kind of waveform that it is. It's definitely missing that initial attack, as you can see there. So what I'm gonna do is layer it. There's this really nice kick drum in um, Louis Vuitton's pack. That has a super nice soft top end to it. So I'm just gonna use the top or the very start of that sample to do this. Give that the initial attack. Right, let me bounce that. See what this waveform is looking like. Is it looking like a kick? Yes, yeah, a kick with a very enlarged attack. So let's just turn that down a little bit. Okay, I think this this will work for the kick drum. Right, let's get a groove down. Can have like a nice off kick as well. Let's swing that kick. And then let's get in the claps. Let's pick one of these claps for the main clap and then do like a different thing. That's definitely the strongest one we have. So let's use that. Right, 
All right, let's add some surrounding claps. This one's cool. Maybe this one too. Looks like a similar waveform. Uh, maybe these last ones. This one, this one, and this one. Okay. So. Get these a bit shorter. Change it up the second time around. Otherwise, it's quite stressful. Let's group those claps together. and ATT on them. Let's boost them. And then maybe make them a bit wider. Um, Keep these like this, but add a sample delay. That sounds cool. These fades need to be longer. Okay, let's get a hat. I think the scissors will definitely work for this. So I'm just gonna create a new audio file. We only need one of these or two. Just that one and that one, cool. How long we got left? Okay. Let's just use this one. Just quantize it, maybe. Copy them across. Delay them a bit so they kind of sit after the kick. That's cool. And then let's copy across this baseline for this one just make sure there's no weird automation just filter this Distort it a bit. That's sick. Let's widen it. And then I'm thinking, get like a formanty type filter on that. Uh, and if I just automate that. 
I think now we've got that down, let's chuck in this microwave pingy again. Um, we don't want to be automating the volume and we don't want an enormous reverb and an enormous delay on it. choose a short reverb side chain it to the kick maybe so let's bounce this out and sample it let's have some of this tea as well actually quite good all right let's add in some percussions Maybe we need like a djembe. What we got now? Ben, right? Let's sample that. That's the one we want. Maybe one more. Tell me the color of each thing. So, let's just use these two. So, let's chuck them in, sample the track. Damn, this is stressful. D sharp. Okay. We're running low on time. Maybe this one. sample delay just to make it a bit wider Five. I think we need a crash so the air freshener can definitely work for this yeah widen it up a bit Let's add in that pepper shaker again, but we can maybe get a nicer one this time. If I just duplicate it, make it a bit tighter with the drop. I think as well that we're lacking kind of, we need a hat on that kick. That scissor's not doing it. This will work. Gonna add in these. And then delay them like I did with the scissors. What are we missing? What haven't we used? I think this is the paper flick. This might be cool. Add some OET. Nice. Some chorus. Nice. And some tremolo. This could be cool, actually. Yes. If we fade that in especially, that might be really cool. All right, let's layer up this chord section because I feel like that's a bit weak. This last one I want to do. Oh, we're so close.
Oh. Okay, so I have mixed emotions about this, but I think there's definitely an idea here. The thing that I'm typically used to when I'm producing is I'm mixing when I'm going along. So maybe that's where I got caught out a bit and I didn't get all the sounds down that I wanted to. I'm happy with this challenge. Like I'm happy that I challenged myself to do this. What I'm gonna do is I'll play you back what, what I've done in this hour and then I'm gonna give it a mix, like a proper mix and make sure all the levels are sweet and all that. And I'll stick it at the end of the video. Yeah, it's been, it's been kind of weird, especially making the sounds from scratch. Now that was, that was hard. I think if I did the one hour challenge without doing that, I might have got a bit more done because I got a bit stumped when I was making the kick and, you know, trying to figure out how to incorporate what where. Um, especially with like, you know, like hand claps usually they're gonna sound when you chuck a sample in they're already processed and they've they've got a lot of body to them but in this case you know it's it's harder it's definitely harder but anyway let's let's see what we've done let's see what we've done Well, there you have it. I mean, that is me making a track completely from scratch with sounds from around the house in in an hour. I hope you guys enjoyed it anyway. And I, I, as I said, I'll play in a second the full mixed version of it, so you can guys you guys can get a proper idea of it. But yeah, it's definitely definitely interesting. It's definitely fun. So if you have any more challenge videos any video ideas anything you want just drop it in the comments below i'm really enjoying making these youtube videos and teaching you guys something showing you how i work super fun so i hope you enjoyed the video regardless and get producing